Hey everybody, this is your Arsenal advisor here. Um, this is the beginning of a segment I'm going to include in my Polymer 80 pistol, 80% kit build. Um, so I, I, I embarked on this, uh, wanted to build a uh, 357 SIG Glock type pistol. Um, so you're probably thinking, what the heck does your Arsenal advisor have all over his plastic uh frame here well this is the first one because i'll show you how i kind of boogered it up in the mill um so what i've got is some sheet metal formwork and a couple of areas that i use to retain some epoxy that i got from home depot just to see if i could fill in the uh, dings made by the mill when i when I moved the uh, the form or the frame in its jig relative to the moving blade or uh, end mill. Anyway, so I'm going to go ahead and cut this off and then uh, reposition the um, the frame so I can see what that uh, what it looks like underneath that all that form work. Okay, so you can see I removed the the two clamps, 2C clamps, and the Dremel sanding wheel that was holding the inner piece. That inner piece of metal, I didn't really need to fill that in. I was just trying to, I don't know, just want to do a little extra. The main part was this little chunk in the uh, front here. Now, if you notice on the metal, there's a bend I made that replicates the, the bend, or not bend, but the, uh, the molded in contour that's at that location uh, what I did was I tried to move the frame in its jig laterally relative to the end mill instead of just moving it laterally and then plunging down so anyway the mill bounced around a little bit and took a little chunk out of the top of uh, what would be under the slide top of the frame there um, that was like on plunge one or two so, needless to say, or not needless to say, I, I bought another one so I could start over because this jig is pretty easy to mill out compared to, say, their, their AR-15s, which I'd done one of those before. So, it's easy, but still got to be careful. Uh, so, I'm going to try to peel this metal off. I was thinking maybe the metal uh, was a little slick, and I'm hoping it doesn't pull the, pull the epoxy out. So, we'll see how that goes here in a couple seconds. Okay, so the um, my sheet metal formwork came out pretty easily. Um, it was so easy I couldn't even stop twice to see if I wanted to get the peeling of it off on a video. It just came off pretty easy. So the the contour I made looks like it's a pretty good approximation to the uh, the factory mold lines. Um, and you can see a little bit higher than or I have to mill down to. And the inside, I don't know if that's a little thicker than it needed to be, and there's a little void um, in there, but I wasn't really concerned about that. So my, my next thing I'm going to try to do is somehow uh, sand down the top without knocking the, uh, the little chunk out of there. I might let it set a little bit in case it needed more time to set up. It's supposed to have cured in uh, in about um, 15 minutes. So this has been almost a full day later. Uh, let me get out the product, show you what I was using. Okay, so I used this JB Weld plastic bonder. Got a Home Depot. It says it's resealable, no waste cap. Um, so you can see I put it back in the case or the little, uh, wrapper backwards. Um, so we don't know, I don't know how hard this stuff is or, um, how well it's going to hold up. So we'll see that in a little bit. Okay, so here's the two frames side by side. 
when I dinged up the one on the right, I went looking for an, another one uh, that was on, on sale. All the, the slick sides were out of stock, so I wound up getting the one with the, the stippling, uh, which is pretty good texture to it. Um, same color, I think it's the, it's the cobalt color that Polymer 80 has. Um, after doing some sanding, a um, little area that got messed up, uh, shaped up pretty good with uh, the Dremel and some filing, a little bit of sanding. Uh, there's a bubble in this one area. Um, I put a little bit more material in, so I'm going to sand that down flat. It kind of looks like a little shiny bubble right there in the middle, just because I want to fill it in. So let me put that next to the other one. Now when I started this project, my intent was to build a, um, a 357 SIG compact Glock style pistol. Um, and I found out uh, that 40 Smith & Wesson slides um, are not made by um, many of the, uh, I guess, manufacturers out there. Especially not at the um, the price point I was looking at. I'd originally ordered a Lone Wolf slide with the PVD finish. Um, I had misunderstood some of what they were explaining to me between the, the 9mm and the 40 Smith & Wesson and the 357 SIG. I guess family of pistols. Um, so I wound up sending back my... My lone wolf slide. I had gotten a 357 sig barrel from Storm Lake. I sent that back and went ahead and just decided to finish the project as a, a G19. Um, I had went and got locally a, a slide um, that was a, a blem, a blemished slide. So it was a little economic, much more economic than the uh, the, the lone wolf. Um, got a new barrel from the uh, the same dealer. Um, they put the sights on for me, um, so that works together with the um, the new slide with the uh, the kit. But what you you're looking at in the frame is a, a .40, sig frame finishing kit. So I ordered the replacement. Uh, extractor or I should say ejector um, the ejector is for uh, a 40 357 size case so I'm going to replace that I'm going to take it all apart and uh, finish uh, changing the profile on the trigger guard um, I was practicing on, on, on this one this is this is the profile that I like more traditional kind of like the like the Glocks are just flat along the bottom a little, you know, point on on the front bottom. So when when I do that, then I'm going to um, I'm gonna probably paint, pick a color, and paint paint the slide and the the frame to match. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm going to paint the the other parts like the like the pins or the uh, mag release. We'll see. But that that's that's up and coming plans. But but this frame was finished. Um, you know the milling process was a lot, a lot better. I will point out for the, the slide block in the front where the recoil spring goes. You have to remove a little bit more material than the the guidelines say that you can see on the actual frame. You have to remove a little bit more so that the recoil spring uh, will work freely inside there. Not a big deal. It's just you'll see once. You see how much more materials inboard of the uh, the metal insert. So, another thing I'll point out, uh, I guess these come with a little plate in here if you want to engrave a serial number on it. Let's see if I can point out some of the blemishes on this slide. Um, you can see what looks like dark pitting. Oh, it's showing up now. Uh, when I go get some DuraCoat products, they have something called DuraFill, which I guess is a coating you can 
fill in such imperfections, sand it down, and then you know paint over the top. Blemishes of this magnitude weren't really a big issue for me. Main thing I I was just wanted to enjoy putting this together. Um, I'm not trying to make a museum piece or anything, but uh, given an ability to fill in some perfections, I think I'm gonna give it a shot. See how it turns out. Okay, let's look at this segment where I use the Duracoat Durafill product. It's a uh, 1 to 12 mixture of 12 parts Durafill. You can see it separates pretty easily after you shake it after a while. Um, just make sure you shake it very well. I think they uh, recommend three minutes uh, and then you 12 parts Durafill to one part of the Duracoat hardener. I mixed it with a uh, medicine, little medicine cap type uh, graduated cup. And then I, I put it in this uh, glass dish when I got the, the right amounts together. So anyway, the left side of the slide, this is, uh, I think I painted two layers of the Durafil on. Uh, you can flash off the solvents after the first layer and then it layers up pretty good. This side had the most blemishes, it's just little pitting. It's a lot less pitting than what the uh the Durafil is that I put over it. Uh I got uh I, it was explained to me uh by uh Lauer uh Custom Weaponry. They answered a email said you could spot apply it, but the directions are geared towards spraying it so you can spray apply it. Uh, the other side um I started sanding down the areas that I had uh, applied the uh, Durafil to. I'm trying to sand it down to flush with the original surface of the metal. Um, just hoping that the Durafil is in the pits and not getting sanded back out. So um, Lauer had recommended the uh, 400 grit sandpaper and I had also um, gotten some 600 grit uh, at the uh, West Marine shop. Okay, here's some intermediate shots of the each side of the slide. I switched to the 600 grade sandpaper, 600 grit rather. You can see in the uh, right up here, getting back down to where some of the pitting is. You can see down here there's some pitting near the uh, back of the slide. Still not quite uh, down to this uh, lower part of the slide yet. Okay, so here's a shot after um, I think I'm going to finish uh, the sanding now. I took the sandpaper off my blocks and just went over it, kind of holding it with my finger to soften it a little bit into some of the lower areas where I knew there was uh, more buildup of Durafil than needed, like right under the uh, extractor area. Um, I wasn't as concerned about this side, but you could see some of the what looks like pitting on the uh, serrations in the back of the slide there. Like I said, I wasn't so concerned about this side as much as the left side. I think I mentioned before, um, you can see where the pitting was on the front lower area and a little bit at the top of the slide in the front, kind of moving back. I think the dirt might have filled in some areas I didn't really see, but I guess well, I won't really tell until uh, until I get the actual Duracoat paint on on it and see how it how it goes. Um, some of the areas that I polished down, uh, I guess with sandpaper, is a little shinier than the the other areas. Uh, you can see some striations from the scrub scrubbing pad that I used uh, when I was using the the, the true the true strip uh, cleaner that Duracoat uh, sells you to um, get everything really cleaned except the products. <laughs> 
I'll probably do more of that uh, before I go to the paint, the paint stage. So that's kind of that's kind of where I'm at with it right now. Okay, so last night I painted the the slide. That's the Duracoat Snow Gray. The finish is pretty uniform. It did leave a little bit of a orange peel that you can see. Tried to use a light coating. Again, I was using the Prevail sprayer system. Um, I missed a couple areas next to where the sights are. Uh, that's because I had the sights put on before I went ahead and to do all the painting. Um, I can probably mix a little batch up and just hand touch it up uh, or with a little brush or something. Um, the Durafill, I can't see really where the pits were. Between the orange peel and the Durafill, um, this area here uh, by the front of the slide was, and down by where the slide rails would go, um, that's where a lot of the pitting was and you can't really see any of it now. Um, so it's debatable whether I would want to apply a, a more of a flat coat on top of this paint. This was the um, recommended three coats. Seems to have gone on thick enough. Um, so another thing to look at is going to be, uh, you can see the uh, back plate. And I also decided to paint a little bit of the... Uh, extractor so that um, just to try to go for a more of a um, uniform color on the slide oh I was going to note that with Duracoat I noticed in the instructions it says if you use a little more hardener you get more of a glossy tone if you use less it becomes more flat so I was going for less but I was mixing the hardener into a cup, measuring cup that had residues of the paint. So I may not have, uh, I may have wound up with a little extra hardener. Uh, and that might be why it's glossy. Because like I, I've been advised before by um, Duracoat, it says if you use a light coat and then you know, flash off some of the solvent soon with a... Um, a heat gun which I was doing you should get a more of a flat appearance but it stayed fairly glossy um, but it's alright looking I'm fairly happy with it hello everybody uh, I'm gonna add on the next segment yesterday I painted the the frame for my um, polymer 80 pistol um, what you can see is the slide is the snow gray with its color chip and the the lower uh, the frame has got its uh, uh, color chip for the underbrush color from Duracoat. So in one of the other segments I kind of pointed out some of the graininess of the slide. Um, so when I did the, the frame I used um, possibly a little less hardener that's supposed to make it more flat and I used a little bit of the reducer which thins it so I think I got a little bit less of an orange peel effect on the smoother areas of the um, lower frame. Uh, I see I did the trigger the magazine release on the other side the the uh, slide slide stop and the um, takedown um, Part. Okay. So when I was masking everything, I forgot to uh, mask off the area where they have a piece of metal for you to put a serial number on it. If you want to put a serial number on your pistol, or if you're somebody in the business of selling firearms, you might have to, uh, or you would have to, put a serial number on it to sell it. Um, other than that, I did have a problem getting the slide to go on, and then I depressed the um, firing pin block and kind of messed around with that a little bit. Then it slid all the way on, and then um, took the slide on and off a couple times, and it kind of went on like uh, normal other Glock pistols I've had. So 
So I'm going to end this here and um, tack this on to the other videos.